All right. Good morning. Uh, I hope that everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, there's been some new developments here at City Hall. I appreciate the opportunity to update you all on and then, of course, take any of your questions. Uh, so we'll get right to it. Uh, I have talked a lot about the city's new management structure, uh, which will improve the way our city operates, make us more efficient, and save time and money. Uh, last week, I was proud to announce the appointment of three new deputy chief operating officers who will play a critical role in the city's new management system. They will make our government more proactive and accountable and help us to make more decisions more quickly on behalf of taxpayers. Uh, Tony Heinrichs has been selected to become the Deputy Chief Operating Officer of our Infrastructure and Public Works team. Uh, this is a promotion for Tony, uh, who is uh, currently the city's uh, Public Works Department Director. Jeff Sturak uh, will become the Deputy Chief Operating Officer of Internal Operations. This is also a promotion for Jeff, uh, coming from his position as Director of Financial Management. And Ron Villa will become the De Deputy Chief Operating Officer of Neighborhood Services, a promotion for Ron. Uh, who has currently serves as the Administrative Services Manager at the San Diego Police Department. Uh, these three gentlemen will join the Chief Operating Officer, Scott Chadwick, uh, Assistant Chief Operating Officer, Stacy Lamedico, and Chief Financial Officer, Mary Lewis, as leaders of our city's executive management team. Uh, each of them is a true professional who I think will make, again, our government more efficient, proactive, and transparent. I'm pleased to have appointed them, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity that the, so many people now want to join the leadership ranks of this city uh, when obviously the opposite was true, not just in the most recent future, uh, recent history. Uh, other items I want to hit on, uh, Lake Morena. Uh, the water reliability, of course, is a, probably a critical issue facing uh, Southern California. And the council, of course, recently voted uh, to raise water rates. Uh, given these realities, uh, we're always looking for ways to maximize our resources and minimize its impacts on our citizens. As some of you may know, uh, we recently decided to access some of the water that we own at Lake Morena, a man-made reservoir about 50 miles east of downtown San Diego. Uh, this has upset some folks who live near the reservoir and use it for fishing, boating, and other recreation. I want to be clear, I understand their concern, but I also want to make it clear that we own the reservoir and that we need that water. Uh, to put it in some context, when I took over the duties as mayor uh, back in August, uh, this was an item that was uh, handled by the previous mayor. Uh, he made the decision not to draw down on Lake Morena. Uh, that decision was made without any contemplation for how to replace the water uh, that is in Lake Morena or pay for the cost of not drawing down on it. As such, I took the action uh, and reversed his decision. I want to be clear that Lake Morena was created a century ago for the specific purpose of serving as a reservoir that could supply drinking water to San Diego. What's more, had we chosen not to access the water supply, we could have been forced to purchase more water from the County Water Authority at a cost of more than $5 million. That is money that we do not have, meaning that we would have to raise our customers' rates even more than they've already been raised. Uh, I want to be clear that we are not emptying, we will not be emptying the reservoir. Uh, even at, after we draw it down, the water uh, area in the lake will be the size of the San Diego Zoo. So the bottom line is that I'm comfortable with the decision, and I imagine that city's water customers are comfortable with my decision as well. A couple more quick items and then your questions. Uh, Project Homeless Connect uh, happened yesterday. Uh, I visited the eighth uh, annual Project Homeless Connect organized by our San Diego Housing Commission. I want to thank the 700 San Diegans who took time uh, to volunteer at the event and the service providers who assisted some of our neediest neighbors. Uh, I understand that together we served uh, nearly a thousand people uh, yesterday, which is about 10 percent of our region's homeless uh, population. As we continue through the holiday season, I'd ask San Diegans to consider our less fortunate neighbors and donate your time and funds and whatever you can to the extent that you can. Uh, we have countless amazing organizations in this city who work every day to make the lives of our neighbors better. Uh, I'm proud to do my part, uh, but it's only by working together that we will make the most difference. Uh, in fact, right after I finish up here with all of you, I'm heading over to the San, San, uh, Senior Community Centers to serve lunch. Uh, this is in support of their Fill a Plate campaign, which aims to end senior hunger in San Diego. Uh, their goal is to fill 93,200 plates this holiday season and over the next year. Uh, to learn more, I'd ask you to join me over at the Gary and Mary West Senior Center on 4th Avenue or just visit servingseniors.org. Uh, lastly, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, Balboa Park December Nights. Uh, it is, of course, happening tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, this is uh, our premier event in Balboa Park. Over 300,000 San Diegans are expected to attend over the two days. Uh, and I'll be kicking off the event a little early tonight uh, at the Botanical Building uh, in Balboa Park uh, with a special announcement. Uh, I'd encourage you all to attend. Uh, for all the festivities, uh, please plan on taking public transit or shuttling in from Petco Park or City College. Information 
on how to do that and other event details are available at balboapark.org and click on the December Nights button. I'm also going to just hint, I, I recognize the reporters in the room uh, may want to take a little time off in December. I would encourage you not to do that because this month is going to be chock full of good news and big announcements uh, starting next Monday. I'm not going to say any more just yet, uh, but we're going to have some pretty awesome gifts for the people of San Diego and remind everyone that we are, in fact, America's finest city. Uh, so with those with that tease, I can see Trent is very excited about that. With that tease, I'll be happy to take your questions. Anyone? Based on who I saw coming out of the elevator this morning, I'm wondering if there's been any kind of uh, movement in the uh, rural metro situation. I don't know who you saw coming out of the elevator. Uh, <laughs> question is on the rural metro situation. You mean the extension of uh, their contract or the RFP for emergency uh, services? Uh, well, possibly both. I just saw some people who were affiliated with that uh, situation coming out of the elevator, wondering hmm. if there's well, they weren't meeting with me. Uh, I, I would, obviously, I think everyone's aware that I have asked for a one-year extension uh, to our existing operating agreement uh, uh, with Rural Metro. Uh, we hope to bring that forward uh, in February to Public Safety and Neighborhood Services. Uh, the RFP for the uh, long-term contract uh, is currently uh, undergoing review by the state and the county. Uh, and when that review is complete, uh, we hope to get that out on the street, I believe, later this month. December 15th. New money? Yeah. You've been reading the voice of San Diego. Yeah. Oh. No, we don't have a reporter here from them. I was just giving. I like the collaboration in the journalism ranks. Uh, what we, we, uh, we have uh, the first quarter uh, budget monitoring report uh, did reflect a, a potential $18 million surplus at the end of the fiscal year. Uh, that is good news, uh, but that is news that I'm encouraging uh, everyone to be uh, 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 reserved about. Uh, no pun intended, uh, because I believe we may need to use every one of those dollars uh, to fill next year's more mod modest $19 million deficit. Um, yes, there are uh, activities uh, revolving the winding down of uh, redevelopment, uh, the closing up of the uh, Data Processing Corporation and other things that are uh, sharing with us combinations of one-time and ongoing revenues. Um, what Again, I think the baseline is, is no one should uh, be getting too excited, uh, we want to make sure that we maintain the fiscal discipline that allowed us to get to the point where we can project um, some modest surpluses in the near term uh, and hopefully larger ones in the long term. And you, you put out the, the date that stayed, stayed in the city address. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about what you're going to talk about? Because usually the mayor talks about what they're going to do in the next year. <laughs> you're only going to have probably a month or two after you give that speech to do whatever you're going to do. So is it going to be more of a, well, just talk, talk a little bit about what, sure. what you're going to address question is, how am I going to handle the State of the City Address, given the limited duration uh, of my mayorship? Um, I would suggest that what I've been able to accomplish in three months means I can get a whole lot done in the two months that will come after uh, I deliver the State of the City Address. Uh, you know, we're going to be working aggressively. I, th I think what we uh, hope to present uh, on January 15th uh, at the Balboa uh, Theater uh, is uh, a vision for the city going forward. Uh, you know, while I'm here in the mayor's office on a temporary basis, uh, even when my time on the 11th floor ends, uh, I will continue on uh, as the council president, uh, and I anticipate having a, 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 a active role in how the city proceeds. But um, I think that what we will do is uh, offer an optimistic, uh, progressive vision for our city, uh, and illustrate and uh, sort of outline what I hope that we can accomplish uh, with the city council, uh, with the community uh, in 2014. Uh, we have lost some time. Uh, uh, we were going backwards for a time in 2013. Uh, that ended uh, about August 30th. Uh, we're moving aggressively forward, uh, and I hope to take stock of some of the things that we've accomplished. But as you say, um, give it a forward-looking uh, uh, perspective for the city. Um, and again, regardless of whether or not I'm the mayor or the council president uh, or just the council member from District 3, all three jobs are pretty cool. Um, I, uh, I anticipate being able to give uh, some glimpse of what we think uh, San Diego will look like for 2014. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the city attorney's view that the council at least gives some thought to an amendment to the city charter that would allow for an impeachment process? Do we need a thing like that so that next time, if there is right. a next time, there's a process? 
Right. So the question is about uh, the city attorney's suggestion about looking at an impeachment process or re revision to our city charter to allow for the removal of an elected official. And uh, I certainly appreciate uh, our city attorney's input on that matter. Uh, I do know that the Rules Committee, led by uh, Council President Pro Tem Leitner, has been looking at a, a series of charter uh, changes or amendments. I think that uh, her efforts in tandem with the city attorney's uh, suggestions uh, may give us uh, a ballot question that we can offer to the voters. Uh, I know that the city attorney has thought uh, that 2014 uh, may be the year to do that. Um, uh, it may be that it falls to 2016. Uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm interested in pursuing that, in, in, but I think that whatever we pursue has to be done uh, with two things in mind. Number one is that it should be difficult to remove uh, an elected official uh, from office. Uh, it should not, and, and so that presents some questions. The second thing is that I don't believe that we should amend our city's governance structure uh, based on the actions of one individual. Um, I don't think that we'll have another Bob Filner uh, in this building. Uh, and as such, we, uh, you know, I, I don't want to take an isolated incident uh, and reform our whole city's government uh, around that one incident. Would, would an amendment involving an Well, I mean, there there are some I've heard. I, I'm, I'm making a broader statement. Um, I've heard some uh, suggest that maybe uh, you know looking at the strong mayor formal government is is uh, is worth looking at. There there are folks who may want to make this bigger uh, than the discrete question about the removal of elected official. What I do know is that we have challenges in our uh, city charter. Uh, the council has repeatedly pointed out uh, various instances where amendments need to be made. Our city attorney, uh, I believe, used the term Swiss cheese. Um, there are there are actions that need to be taken. Uh, but I w I want those. Uh, motivations to be really about making the city charter uh, a stronger, better document, um, rather than uh, simply a reaction uh, to an isolated incident. And next Monday, when the former mayor is sentenced, what's going to be the vibe here? Are people going to be at, uh, at DEFCON 5 waiting for it to happen, or are you going to be just doing the people's business and read about it or watch the newscast somewhere later? I'll, I'll read the LA Times. How about uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, Tony, we've moved on. We have moved on, uh, and we are back in the business of serving the people uh, of San Diego. Um, naturally, I'm glad that the process is uh, playing out, and uh, that uh, uh, this matter will uh, come to an end, at least uh, that component of it. But um, I, I don't anticipate watching uh, anything um, or, uh, you know, minding my Twitter feed during this. I, I'll be focused on on repairing the damage that was left um, by the Filner administration and moving the city uh, forward. Um, I can, you probably want more detail than what I can give you, um, but after July 1st of 2013, uh, new city hires um, are uh, entering uh, a defined contribution plan rather than a defined benefit plan. Um, that is, uh, uh, there are some peculiarities around that because of the existing litigation uh, around uh, Proposition B, um, but that's our current vehicle, uh, and we're doing that while we uh, deal with the litigation in court. Um, but I can get you some more of the specifics, uh, uh, or Katie can follow up with you if you don't mind. Um, unrelated question. Yeah. Oh, I got lots of comments. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, we will uh, we will address this uh, in the next uh, number of days uh, at the city council. The council will have the opportunity uh, to decide whether or not to repeal uh, the ordinance uh, and resolution, or to place it on the ballot for the voters' consideration. Uh, you know, I'm of uh, of the belief uh, that the plan is a solid one. Uh, that the compromise that was uh, arrived at uh, was a good one. Uh, it balances the needs of the people who live in Barrio Logan with the businesses that are located in Barrio Logan and undoes, uh, undoes uh, roughly uh, 35 years uh, worth of poor uh, planning. Um, to repeal that plan uh, would be to consign Barrio Logan uh, to this uh, mishmash of uses uh, that are unhealthful for kids uh, and that are bad for business uh, in that community. And so I'm not interested in repealing uh, the ordinance or the resolution. Um, of course, that means that uh, the referendum uh, uh, proponents uh, are going to cost taxpayers a significant amount of money uh, for us to pursue this. Um, uh, so be it. Uh, I, uh, I think that's regrettable. I would hope that we wouldn't come to this point. Um, but the council uh, has previously repealed ordinances, um, and all that's gotten us is more of these referendum challenges. Uh, and so that strategy I don't think has worked, uh, and as such that's uh, w in part what informs my opinion. Uh, my position on this is 
pretty simple. Um, nine blocks of Barrio Logan uh, will not make or break uh, the maritime industry. Uh, they are an important part of our regional economy. Uh, I certainly want to do what I can to support them, which is why I supported the Barrio Logan plan. Um, this provides them the certainty going forward to untangle uh, the residential industrial conflicts that we have in that community and to provide them a clear path forward. Um, I believe that it does allow for a reasonable expansion of their businesses, um, and I think it's the right plan. The bigger threat to our shipbuilding industry is federal sequestration, and I think that that's where we can all collectively spend more of our time. Nine blocks in Barrio Logan uh, will not harm this industry, um, but continued federal reductions in spending uh, will do exactly that. And the council make a decision on that at a special meeting or wait till next year? I believe um, we are waiting on some uh, administrative matters from the county registrar of voters in terms of certifying uh, uh, signatures uh, and verifying counts, uh, presuming they can make certain uh, uh, deadlines uh, and their situation is complicated by the fact that they're relocating currently. Um, uh, who'd have thought that it would be such a busy time <laughs> of year for, for voting uh, at December of an off year? Uh, anyway, if they're able to make certain deadlines, I'd expect this to be before the council, probably on December 17th, I think, is what we're looking at tentatively. Um, but of course, again, that's uh, presuming that certain deadlines can be made by the registrar. Anyone else? Dean? Yeah, uh, following the uh, Barrio Logan referendum, uh, the Chamber of Commerce is putting, I think, uh, setting aside $50,000 to challenge the um, uh, linkage fee mm -hmm. uh, after its second reading. Or if there are any concerns that that, too, is going to be hitting the balance? Well, that's a possibility, and for the same reasons, uh, I'd hope that they would not do that. Uh, you know, what we are doing, what the council uh, chose to do was to follow the law. And the law says we're supposed to look at this fee on an annual basis. Uh, the city uh, and previous city leaders had uh, chosen to ignore that piece of our city's law for about 17 years. I'm proud to be a part of a city council that, among other things, is enforcing the law again uh, in this town. And this is one of them. Uh, we have a significant challenge when it comes to affordable housing. I think you ask any San Diego family, uh, particularly working families, they know how difficult it is to live in this community uh, uh, from a housing cost standpoint. Uh, uh, and this is in no way uh, a silver bullet. This is not a panacea to that problem, but it is one of many solutions that we ought to pursue. Uh, so I would hope that folks would understand um, that this is the right thing to do uh, and that their time and effort and their money um, uh, should be uh, expended elsewhere. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see what, what comes. But I would encourage folks uh, not to uh, uh, pursue that process uh, and instead uh, come to the table, uh, come on other solutions. Uh, I have said very clearly, I understand linkage is not a perfect tool. Uh, and I'd be the first vote to repeal it if we can come up with something better. Uh, we spent about two years uh, in a citizen's task force uh, pursuing that uh, with no uh, results. And that's why the action that we took was the one we take uh, took. Uh, and but at any rate, uh, until better options are provided, this is what we have. Uh, it's the right thing to do. Wendy. Yeah. Do you have any um, thoughts on the or anything to say about the audit committee meeting topic of the audit committee meeting this morning about the police retention and three thousand police officers set to retire or eligible to retire in the next five years? Anything well, the police. Uh, I, I didn't view uh, the audit committee meeting. I was working on other things, but uh, obviously I'm familiar with the issue. You know, police retention uh, is is a very important concern uh, to me and I think to the council as a whole. You saw us uh, try and address that in a modest way uh, this uh, current fiscal year by allocating $2 million uh, for uh, recruitment and retention efforts. Uh, this was the first time uh, we made that kind of uh, allocation uh, in several years and really is a reflection of the fact that we understand that we have a problem uh, and that we want to start addressing it. Uh, you know, this is uh, something that we'll continue to have to grapple with. Uh, I, I am uh, uh, interested in, in reading Tony's paper the other day that showed that there is a, a similar problem up in Los Angeles. Uh, I think there's some discussion that the sheriffs are also starting to see this problem. Um, and uh, you know, we will be out there in the marketplace aggressively uh, recruiting uh, officers. Uh, and that was a part of what that $2 million is going toward. What are some of the big ticket items you want? Yeah. Coming in January, the food truck regulations yeah. that, that you get uh, criticized for. What other big ticket items do you want to make sure get done but, so you don't need that tonight? Uh, sure. Well, I mean, there's a host of sort of nuts and bolts issues that we continue to kind of, uh, uh, you know, Un, uh, uncover uh, Lake Morena and some of these other things that, that just need uh, attention. You know, my goal and objective is to uh, 
uh, have the place uh, cleaned up and, uh, and hand the keys over to the next guy uh, so they don't have to look backward, they can look forward. Uh, and I think that's what San Diegans would want. So that's that's the overall objective. So there are a number of sort of smaller things that are on those lines that we're working on. In terms of initiatives, you know, we will uh, uh, ha ask the council to consider the $120 million infrastructure, uh, neighborhood infrastructure bond uh, in January. Uh, I think that will be a significant down payment toward repair of our roads and investment in some of our neighborhood uh, public facilities. Uh, and so that will happen uh, in our time here. Um, we will do a lot of work on proposing of uh, the FY15 budget. Uh, you know, the next mayor will get to uh, actually unveil it, but a lot of the work is being done now. It's my hope that that document uh, will uh, contain no service level reductions uh, and, and hopefully a couple of enhancements. Um, I'm particularly interested in what we can do to expand library hours. Um, the only complaint I hear about our new downtown central library is it's not open enough. And I hear San Diegans, and I want to be responsive to that concern. But I think that's also true at most of our branch libraries as well. Uh, so we'll do a lot of work in that direction. Uh, and then there's just other uh, policy uh, initiatives that had been started uh, or were underway, maybe stymied during the Filner administration, that we want to get back on track, uh, specifically things like the Climate Action Plan, which I think is going to be a very important uh, document for the city uh, for the next number of decades. Uh, our plastic bag reduction ordinance, uh, the food truck issue, uh, the medical marijuana issue. There are a host of uh, legislative uh, initiatives uh, that even if I can't get them across the finish line uh, before I transition out, uh, I'll be uh, back down on the council floor advocating for aggressively. Did you plan to make any endorsement in the mayor's just now that it's down to two? Uh, and why or not? I haven't made a decision yet. And I'm, uh, as we saw each other the other morning, I'm interested to see what they have to say. You plan on uh, running again? I am, yes, and that will be on the council docket next week. And you've you've announced the the three high, the three promotions. That mm -hmm. you did. Is there any? It doesn't seem like you're hesitating at all to make these decisions, mm -hmm. knowing that obviously all those jobs are right. you know, uh, at well jobs that you know the next mayor could change. Is there any hesitation? You know, obviously there's not to, to making these moves, knowing that these people may get shuffled around again. Right. Uh, no, uh, we need qualified professionals running the city. Uh, and when I took over the duties of mayor, uh, we had uh, an interim chief operating officer. Uh, we had no public utilities director, no uh, development services director, no chief financial officer. I mean, these uh, we had uh, a lot of these positions vacant or filled with interim appointments. Uh, and that is not the way to run uh, the eighth largest city uh, in the United States. Uh, so I have made it a point to fill those positions with qualified individuals who are competent uh, professionals, uh, and I think that's exactly uh, who we found to fill these positions. Uh, many of these positions have required uh, council confirmation. Uh, all of them have been unanimously confirmed by the city council, which means the next mayor will have voted to confirm them. Um, and uh, it is not a hesitation on my part, but I recognize uh, that there could be hesitation on the part of some of these candidates who have come forward to, to fill these roles. I think it really speaks to the fact that they're motivated by public service. Uh, that they're willing to take on these positions, uh, even with the potential uh, that they wouldn't serve uh, in the next administration. Uh, but um, you know, my objective is to uh, create a, a well-run machine here uh, that will be able to help uh, whoever the next mayor is implement their vision for this city. Uh, and I think the team we're putting in place is going to be able to do that. Uh, and I think that uh, it would be foolish uh, not to keep any of these people on board uh, because they know this organization, uh, they are qualified, they are professional, and they'll be able to help the next mayor uh, uh, Move the city forward. And Mike Geary sent mm. a letter yesterday about the uh, Detroit MTC, uh, kind of saying that, you know, saying obviously he said in the past that Sandy should, should have gone right. that route uh, as far as bankruptcy. Do you have any response to that? As I recall, he also once encouraged the city to evacuate itself. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say that those comments were completely irresponsible. They're not reflective of the reality, uh, and a quick review of the facts would prove those, uh, that suggestion to be wrong. Uh, we are not Detroit. Um, it's uh, wrong to compare us to Detroit. Uh, we are looking at uh, our five-year financial outlook uh, forecast surpluses. Um, we are in the position of considering uh, enhancing neighborhood services. We are not selling city assets. Uh, we have not been taken over by the state. Uh, there is no way that you can compare San Diego to Detroit, and to do so is irresponsible. No, I'm not going to. Would you? <laughs> I can only imagine what you were like as a child at Christmas. You have to wait until the morning.
and do not wake me up before 6 a.m. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's uh, we have some good stuff. You know, I I, I don't mean to be coy, and I, I do want you to have uh, something to fill uh, your newscast uh, next week. So I, I I won't do it. But but I will tell you that it's a series of things that show that the city is back on track, that we're fixing uh, City Hall, uh, and that people want to come to this town. Uh, and it's going to be uh, a number of really cool things that uh, I think is going to give us a lot of pride. Um, I dare say gifts for San Diego uh, during the holiday season. Anyone else? Anything new regarding the Chargers and the stadium? Uh, I don't have anything new. No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go serve some seniors now. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much.